I'll be honest with you, I was still asking questions about that this morning. And um, I was not clear about it. And I, again, I think the point he's trying to make is, how can you make it clear for not just us to not understand, but for the public and also? That's what I'm saying, maybe so, the percentage split up on Maybe you could do it this way. Say it, I'm just using as an example. Say Lewis is making $50,000 a year, Michelle's making 50000 the clerk and reception is making 50000 So you put down 150000 then you put the percentage above that for the 70260 to build that in here, and we understand what's going on. See what I'm saying? Yes. So you want everybody's salaries listed? Well, we'd have to give our buys. <clears throat> You're giving, I'm not, I'm not, specifically saying X, X number of dollars for the salaries, I'm saying accumulative salaries for the salaries and then below that you might have an asterisk saying well 20% 20% of such and such adds up to the 17260 and then you see where the money's going or where it's coming from. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I can see that. You know, yeah. just this yeah. thing, way this thing yeah, here, you're yeah. not going to read it. Yeah. Understand yeah. it. Yeah. So that's what you would say. what I'm saying? That's what I was saying, yeah. yeah. Uh, I can tell you that, for example, if you look on page six, if you were to, uh, if we were to do that, not that we can't do that, but just for presentation purposes, we would have all five of the positions in the finance department. Uh, we would have a uh, finance director, point three, the general fund, point three, water fund, point four, sewer fund, and then we probably would have to go to the next page, which might not make it real easy to follow things to put the page overlook the salary total. Not that it can't be done, but, no, but there's, there's always something lost for presentation. Well, you wouldn't have to do it on the finance because this is what we're, this is what you're doing. This is what's left after you take the 20 percent out, right? Well, Isn't that correct? And after we take the 70 percent or 70 percent out, right? That's what's left. That's correct. So you wouldn't have to do it on that one, but the other ones, I think, it would be easier to read if you would do that. Anybody on the same, same scale on one here? Yeah, it would make it easier to understand. It would show where the money's going. It would just make it easier. I'm not saying that you're, you're doing anything wrong. I'm just saying it's just hard to hard to read it the way it is here. I understand. I all right, trade page 12. The police vehicles, 89,756. Yeah. <coughs> County, they have a, their expenditures every month. They put it in the Cecil Way. Cresswell Chevrolet Inc. Law Enforcement 2011 Chevrolet and Powell Patrol Vehicles. Two cars for $38,000. Two cars for $38,000. Now that was last week. The following, I guess it was the same, same week, there was an editorial in there about police taking cars home. Uh, this is a quote. A replacement cruiser which can, can have costly communications gear from its predecessor installed outfitted with safety equipment cost about $30,500. That's what the county does for police cars. I still don't understand why the town, with the shop they have at Public Works, that they can't take the equipment out of one car, put it in another car. You're saving an awful lot of money by doing that. A lot of money. I would think. Okay, I can tell you that, that that amount for the two vehicles that were approved is uh, with all the equipment added I to it. I understand uh, that. The cars themselves are $22,000, $26 state bid with a uh, Apple Ford from Columbia, Maryland. Mm -hmm. uh, the price for the total outfitting uh, was a figure we uh, got from the police department's request. They requested 14 vehicles, two were approved. Uh, well, that, that, that was the answer I got last year, the same answer. It didn't come fully equipped. Well, not with the... Uh, I don't want to speak for the police. Well, last year he yeah, said they come the fully equipped, equipped, ready for a patrolman to get into. That's what I was told last year. Well, I understand so there's laptops, there's the lighting added to it, the stripes on the side, pages. Um, uh, um, you know, the, someone from the police could better answer that than me, but, but that's the mm -hmm. price we have. Uh, for, you know, we have the price for vehicle, but we've added on to that the price that the police have given us 
as a cost to, to get on the road? Well, I think maybe if you look into this this issue, is if the county can do it for that kind of money, I would think the town could do it for the same amount of money or close to it. They have it uh, broken down as to what's going in the vehicles. Pardon? Uh, there's a breakdown that we have in our work plan of what's in the vehicles that comes to eighteen thousand dollars. What's put in? Well, I'm sure you have. After that, uh, I'm, not, I'm not asking for it to be itemized or anything cost. like that. I just think it could be done a lot cheaper. For a lot of things to be done a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. Now, your budget. We picked this up on Wednesday. When when did all of you get your budget? Did you get it beforehand that you could go over it together and and uh, if you had any questions to resolve any of those questions, did you get your budget before we did? Oh yeah, they did. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, we had a workshop. We had a workshop. Mm -hmm. When was the workshop? Last May eleventh. Wednesday. Wednesday. <coughs> last Wednesday? Mm -hmm. No, was it last Wednesday? No, last Wednesday. Wednesday it wasn't last Wednesday. No, it was, no, it was Wednesday before that because we had a board meeting. Oh, sorry, last Wednesday was the regular one. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, tough, uh, May 11th, right? No, no, we didn't have no. one Wednesday. We had a special one. But it, it was a special it, meeting, wasn't it? It wasn't, it wasn't done like it was done. No, it was on a special one. Which, which, which I, I, you know, May 3rd? I didn't agree with that. And I, wanted, I wanted it to be done like it was done before, where we sat down with each department and went through it as a, as a whole. And I, you know, I'll be and it wasn't done discussing it. It wasn't well, done that way this year. I had requested that back in January, but we didn't. No one responded right. about doing it like we did right. last year, having each department present starting in February. I believe we did, but no one said anything. It was just didn't happen. Well, the county they have a public hearing, and public comment addressed. People ask different questions, and some of the questions are a lot clearer than what mine were. But they don't vote on their budget until a week or two later because it gives them a chance to go over different things and see if they can reduce this or not and the other. Are you voting on this this evening or what? Just for induction yeah. purposes. No, just for induction, induction purposes. purposes. Right. Right. It's all one to know. Mm James C. Nicholson, 113 North Street, Elkton, Maryland. Uh, I want to give what $50,000 on the budget for the Alliance. Am I correct? How come that they? Jimmy, can you speak in that mic a little bit closer? Uh, oh yeah, excuse me. How's that sound? It's fine. Okay. Sorry about that. It's okay. And uh, how come we didn't get a report? of what the expenditures are. We have no accountability. I am not a member of the Alliance. I am a businessman in downtown Elton. It's a Main Street magnet, so I hear. And I want to know if the Main Street magnet is also a town councilwoman is going to vote on this budget. I don't think she should. And the other thing is we see here that you have rent come in only $3,000. Now, where's the, does the alliance pay for the, the use of the building or the utilities? Or does the Boys and Girls Club, are, are they in the Boys and Girls Club in your building or our building, should I say? Or have we received any funds? I think, I think they're working on the, the alliance uh, reporting issue because I, I requested that a few meetings ago. But so, I think something should be done now. I really don't believe, as a taxpayer, that I am on North Street. You take advantage of my property and you don't respect me. I have never asked anything. And I'm a firm believer that if I'm a taxpayer in downtown Elkton, I don't have to belong to the Alliance. My taxes are paying the salary of and the expenses of that building. <coughs> And also, I want to know, they, they use my parking lot. Right now, they 
you, you can't, you, you, you've got the barriers moved, you never put them back. And he never put them back, I have to always request to put him back. Now, when I went away on vacation, they even set a bar up in my right of way, which is illegal, and sold liquor another place. And I don't know how they got away with it, but I think that we should stop funding the Alliance. And I'm saying it right now in public because I don't think I have to be a member to be notified. If you haven't projects in downtown Elkton, I should be notified. When you put no parking signs up two days or almost a day and a half ahead, no parking on the streets to have your shows, your car shows, and then when I get criticized behind my back, and I know things are said behind my back, and I know what's going on, and I think that's very disrespectful. I've been in Elkton, I'm the oldest retailer family in the same position in downtown Elkton, and I'm getting disrespect from the board, and the Alliance especially. I rest my case. Nice talking to you. Anyone else? This is on the budget now, right? This is on the budget. This is <clears throat> no, this is just a budget. Sorry, Dave. Anyone else? All right, this public hearing is now closed. All right, so can I, uh, unless the board has any questions, you get a motion to uh, accept the uh, budget for introduction purposes only. I move that we accept the budget for introduction purposes only. I have a second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Okay. Osma, you're up. Too, but <clears throat> you said residential. Yes. How would it apply to someone with a res you mean a residential homeowner? Yeah, a, homeowner. <clears throat> a homeowner, a renter, oh. or anybody living in a multi family uh, like an apartment, condominium, carriage home, something like that. Okay. All these are going into this detail as well. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so, like I said, anyone, if they are annexed in, 
stay within the next couple of weeks or a couple of months until the funds run out, they'll also be eligible for these funds. The purpose of this is to, again, install energy efficiency measures. I'll get into these measures in the DNS. It's included but not limited to the majority of the ENERGY STAR qualifying items. Uh, it also, the energy savings must equal or exceed 15 to 30 percent. We've noticed through the number of auditors that we have on the list, as well as the work that the committee has done with other corporations, that the majority of the ener energy savings goes far exceeds the 30 percent and usually goes up to about 75 to 90 percent. So this is a map through the housing community development as of April 18, 2011. Um, anything in the red lined areas is the targeted area. Um, so it's again, it's the entire town of Elton. Everybody, everybody in the town can benefit from this program. So everybody wants to know who's going to get the money. In uh, 2010, the state of Maryland applied to the Federal Department of Energy funds. $408 million were dispersed to 41 states, and the state of Maryland got $20 million. Out of the $20 million, it's awarded to 15 of the Main Street communities. Again, it's not just the Main Street area, it's for the entire town. Um, Elton, again, is strong through the Alliance, through the Facade Program, the Downtown Valley, <coughs> Historic Preservation. It's just a few of the number of things that um, the Elton Alliance has applied for and been very successful at, was able to be one of the 15 communities. There are approximately 20, 23? 23 Main Street communities in the state of Maryland, um, and again, 15. We're awarded. I hope you take advantage of any amount of the 20 million. Um, if you average it out, it comes out to about 1.3 million per community. If we exceed that 1.3 million, state is not going to say no to that funding. So, some of the highlights I'm going to go over today is going to be the small business loan program, the residential loan, homeowner, and home renter loan program, and the multifamily loan program. Let's start with the, the smart business program, is what they call it. These are low interest loans that are not to exceed 5%. Uh, the average loans that we have seen in the past range anywhere from 1.89 to about 3.89%. So they're not going to be very high interest loans. They're used for energy efficiency projects. These include HVAC, um, lighting, um, they have not specifically stated um, green energy, such as solar, geothermal, or wind. Um, but we have been told by the state of Maryland that we can include some of these projects. It, again, one of the great things about this project is very subjective. The, our committee, along with the director of the Alliance, will sit down with a member of the Department of Housing and Community Development and go over each individual application. So if there are items that may or may not be included in the machine, they're willing to be more impossible. <coughs> These loans are up to $50,000. So a small business owner can get up to $50,000 to increase the energy efficiency in their businesses. Now, loans over $50,000 are only for those buildings exceeding 6,000 square feet, large uh, commercial offices or retail locations, including nonprofits, churches, schools, and government institutions. These can also, one of the main things about this loan program is it's not limited to just this program. You can apply for the loan. You can also apply for Energy Star uh, commercial rebates. <coughs> uh, the residential can apply for the, um, the Energy Star residential rebates, of the appliance rebates. Uh, there's also other state and private funds that can be applied for this as well. Maryland has an Energy <coughs> Audit rebate. They have Energy Star rebates from the state of Maryland. There is also, for, and this is specifically for commercial properties, there is what's called the 1492 program, which is cash in lieu of tax credit. So if a uh, corporation or a company or commercial entity decides to apply for these loans, and they garnish these loans, they can, with their tax credit can be in a check. And I have gone through a lot of these programs through um, my dealings. I see corporations get checks in the amounts of hundreds of thousands of dollars. So instead of you know, waiting for that tax credit to come through over a number of years, they can get cash in hand. One of the great things also is uh, it's available to all applicants, um, especially the commercial ones, is the Energy Star Financial Tools. This is a cash flow opportunity calculator. Our energy auditors that are approved through the state of Maryland Department of um, Housing and Community Development 
we'll go over this with each applicant. It gives you the breakdown of the cash flow and your return on investment in real dollars. And you can see exactly how much money each individual will be saving uh, by implementing energy uh, efficiency measures. You'll be able to calculate the impact of the improved energy performance on the financial value of the implemented measures. And so these are great tools that are, that are offered um, as a part of the audit and as part of the application process. It's not going to cost the applicant anything extra. Second program is the D Smart Home program. There are two loan programs through this. One is the Energy Star Home, and the other one is the Home um, Complete. There's general, generous, excuse me, um, eligibility. All that's required is the application, of course, verification of income, credit score of 650 or greater, and a debt to income ratio of up to 15%. So this allows a greater number of applicants to benefit from the program. Up to $15,000 is available for eligible homeowners. And again, um, the homeowners can also stack rebates and um, uh, tax credits on this as well. So a lot of people ask, why do I need $15,000 of energy improvements in my home? Um, as of 20, 2011, this is from the Energy Star on website. This is the average energy, the annual energy bill for a typical single family home. Approximately 2,200, you see 29% goes just to the heating. 14% uh, goes to water heating. About 13% goes to appliances. You see a breakdown as to where all your money is going. By implementing energy efficiency measures like energy storage, dishwashers, and appliances, um, reheating, cooling systems, solar hot water, tankless hot, um, solar hot water, tankless hot water, you can drastically reduce the cost of all these. <coughs> The B-Star Energy, uh, B-Smart Home Energy Star Program, again, these are these improvements are not limited to what I'm supposed to hear. I'm actually applying for this program, I'm going to get a tankless water heater. It's going to be great. I'm going to get instant hot water. Um, ceiling fans are also under this program, programmable thermostats, windows, doors, ventilating fans, the list can go on and on and on. The, for the Energy Star Home Program, it's a low interest rate. Uh, at 6.99%, an energy audit is not required, and anybody, any eligible homeowner or renter can apply for this program. The Home Complete is used for weatherization and a whole home envelope program. Um, an energy audit is required, and it is free for a limited time, based on a rebate that you get back from the state of Maryland. Uh, weatherization in a whole home is roofing, HVAC, um, air conditioning, Things like that, things that could benefit the entire house. So low, this interest rate is a little lower because you are required to go through an energy audit. The energy audit, I'm um, going to go into that in a minute as well. Uh, so it's, at, it's capped at 4.99%. These are included, again, not limited to the air infiltration reduction, uh, insulation throughout the house, a lighting retrofit furnace cleaning, and other safety measures that can improve the energy efficiency in the house or the residence as a whole. Uh, the B-Smart multifamily is for any apartment buildings, townhouses, single family homes, or single occupancy, single room occupancy um, within five units or one more. Uh, the majority of these funds are not, there's no cap on these funds. Um, it's purely subjective to the applicant as to the number of projects and how many projects that they want to undertake. And it has term limits for the loans of three, five, and ten years. Okay. I've got to ask this question while I'm thinking about it. From what I'm hearing and what you're presenting, it sounds good for someone with all that electric that they're using. Mm -hmm. Have you or the program um, committee thought about tying into the electric company that services the town of Elkton? And instead of us paying that large bill, you guys manage that where we can get that percentage of the loan because we're paying more. Okay. This, this is a program for the state of Maryland. It's not for the energy companies itself. What the energy companies do is just Del Marva, and in this area, the majority is Del Marva, um, in other parts of Maryland, BGE, um, and Chesapeake. What they're doing is they're providing meetings for, for either the energy audits, for the energy efficiency measures. Let's say you want to put in. Uh, solar hot water and reduce, you know, your hot water bill. They'll provide rebates for that as well. And and I understand that part, but just one more piece of that: when a person has exceeded 
the limit for that bill and they can't afford it, they can't pay it, is either they set them on a payment plan, which is similar to what you're saying. Right. That, that, huh? that actually is a payment plan through the, uh, the utility itself. Yeah. This program is only for energy efficiency measures. There are other programs through the state of Maryland that do provide financial assistance. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of stuff in there that... Yeah. This, is not, this is not the program okay. for that. This is for the energy to reduce the, the initial energy cost from from uh, the usage of the electricity, not post-usage. Um, so I can, I'd give you some more information yeah. on... I'm, I'm looking at how you can tie that in to part of a program we're providing for yeah, somebody that's, like that's that. That's actually a great, that's a great idea. We can provide that to, you know, housing community development and we meet with them in the next couple of weeks. Currently, this program does not provide for that. However, when we met with um, housing community development, one of the things they did tell us was this is not a program that's going to end once the $20 million has been fully allocated. It's a revolving fund that they wanted to be to move towards newer and better projects. This is one, of the, one, of those things, one of the things we can do is introduce that idea to the community development. We've done that through uh, one of the school systems, through uh, a company that came in and made the school's efficiency uh, uh, reduce the cost, and it was like almost uh, 30 to 40 percent, uh, percent different right. in the cost. But basically all they've done was change light bulbs and stuff like right, that. that what, what they did is they also included part of this program by changing, uh, by including CFLs, um, the, the CFL light bulbs in buildings, um, instituting, including ceiling fans, um, changing out, you know, updating the HVAC and the conditioning the home. You can reduce the energy costs. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, one of the other things about the multifamily is, again, is to increase the energy efficiency in the existing rental housing stock, um, is to preserve the affordable rental housing opportunities, and again, to increase the available capital um, to finance other measures by leveraging other public and private capital. So owners um, and providers of rental housing or multifamily housing can use this to garnish other financial sources. Now, an energy audit is a part. Um, I'm going to go over the energy audit in just a minute. It's a low interest rate. Again, uh, that interest rate is capped at 5%. It will never go above that 5%. Most likely it's going to be lower than that. It's dependent upon the <coughs> overall cost of the number of projects you can apply for the best. And there's no cap on it. It's in conjunction with the MEHA program. It's being phased out, and funds for that program will be allocated to this as well, as well as the, uh, the Green Grant Rental Housing Program the Now the energy audit, a lot of people have asked me, what is the energy audit? Um, we do have a, uh, an individual here, Matthew Stewart, who is an auditor from EPI certified, the highest certification for energy auditing in the country. Um, it must be conducted by the Department of Housing and Community Development Auditor. We are lucky enough to have energy auditors. Well, we'll see what it is to have a number of energy auditors in the local areas, so not only benefiting from having something local, but providing business to our local communities, to our local businesses. Um, only the recommendations by the auditor are approved for the loan. We're, now, they're not going, the auditor is going to give a list of recommendations. It could be ceiling fans, it could be CFL, it could be, you know, insulation in buildings. Any one of those, one or a number of those, as many as you want, um, can be applied to be approved for the loan. And again, the minimum required energy savings is 15 to 30 percent, very generous. We've seen anywhere again from you know 75 to 80 percent, 90 percent. So the last question we have to ask is why aren't you going to be smart? This is a great opportunity for anybody to take take advantage of lowering their energy costs. Uh, and it's not just energy costs for the next you know two to three years, it's energy costs for the next two to seven years. So to help Elton lead Maryland in energy efficiency, we want Elton to be able to use as much of the $20 million as possible. By using this money, we'll be, you know, one, get attention from the state of Maryland that Elton is serious about green energy practices and energy efficiency. Um, and it also allows not only the Elton Alliance, but also the town of Elton and other organizations within the town of Elton to garnish more funds through the state of Maryland. So you can see small businesses and homeowners and renters on their energy expenses. Oops. 
And to be smart, you want it to be clean. Clean is to community-led environmental action network. This is a community-led network. Everybody on this community is a volunteer. Uh, we're not being paid to promote this. Um, we have a number from a whole gamut of on in the energy industry, in the private industry. We also have members um, from the utility on our committee as well. And if anybody have any questions, you can always contact the Elton Alliance or myself. Um, I've also filled the website for the eSmart program. Um, if anybody wants to take a look at the program, everything. I've given out brochures for the room, as well as the business fact sheets. So feel free to contact us. Um, is there any questions about money there? As a homeowner and, and a townhouse, I guess, how would I, if I wanted to do this, how would I start the process of applying? 